What's up, everyone? This is the Go Along Podcast coming to you. At least one of us. We're remote. We have to do this together. I wish you could come on the road with me, Jim. But I'm at Sun King Brewing in beautiful Indiana. Not quite Indianapolis. I think I'm a, a little north. Carmel. Does that sound familiar? That yeah. town? Yeah, I spent so, a lot of time uh, in the Indianapolis area over the right. years. All those combines over the all years. Of them. But uh, yeah, this is a hell of a brewery. Brewery, uh, Sun King Brewing. Great logo. It's an angry sun of sorts for those watching. I like it. It's the that's the scout in you right now. This is a true what a true scout does on the road. You got to find the local brewery, sink yourself into the city a little bit. Well, I, I do wear the Hamburg hat, so we we remember I mean, we had we to know. dance with who brung you, right? As a sleep at the wheel says, you dance with who brung you. We're HBC to the core, but you know we got to scout. We got to see what else is out there. That's all it we is. We wouldn't be doing our jobs if we weren't scouting. No, that's all it is. You're, you're you're scouting training camp. I mean, you are truly on the road. And <laughs> I will tell you this, Tyler. There's a time in both our lives that if this was a traveling podcast, it would be pretty good tonight. If we were both there together with yes. no responsibilities, I think that'd be a good pod. In another lifetime, Jim. Another right? lifetime. In another, another lifetime. lifetime. Another lifetime. <laughs> I'm just barricaded myself in the corner here, just hoping I'm not too loud for the other patrons, right? I'm, I'm listening to you in one ear and trying to see if my son's going to start crying in the other ear. So We've got sleep schedules aligned. Ella, Serafino, sleeping through the night. Red light, green light. Red light, green light. Yes, green. that's part of it. That's part of it. We found a, a sleep training expert on Facebook. We, Gina, my wife, did all the research. But whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. We're in a good place with the sleep schedule. But, yeah, let's talk some football. You know, there's a lot of news. There's a lot. Of tour. Well, let's, we'll, get to, we'll get to this T-Camp tour uh, in a bit later in the podcast. Deshaun Watson. You know, we have to start with Deshaun Watson, Jim, because – the NFL in its uh, infinite wisdom, glory. It's no coincidence that the Stephen Ross stuff was dropped Tuesday, one day after one day Sue, after. L, Sue L's uh, verdict or recommendation came out. So let's not do what the NFL wants us to do. And let's keep talking about Deshaun Watson, eh? I just don't know how – the hard part, just talk football in general. He hasn't played – for how long? Now he's six weeks. He's not going to play for his new team. I just, just the football part of alone, I don't think it's that easy that he just comes in and it's perfect. Everything's perfect. Football. I'm just talking football right now. Yeah. It, it's so hard. It takes, it takes so much time and chemistry to build, you know, like even Tom Brady. I mean, they didn't really click in on that offense till late in the season in Tampa where I thought they started playing better, but they weren't clicking like that. It took time. I guess that part of it, we're just all, we just all just assume as soon as he comes back, they're going to win their next 11 games, whatever the record is after six, they'll win their next 11 and they'll be fine. And I think there's a lot that we haven't talked about with football in this. Like, I, I don't, I don't think it's a given. I don't think it's a given that he's just going to come in and dominate the AFC. I know we've been talking about, you know, massages so yeah, much that I, you forget, almost, you forget that there's a football aspect me to, to this. Know. Well, it's gross. It's disgusting. It's This sick. whole it's, thing is gross. Like yeah. when they compare the, the – do you – let me ask you this, if you want to go that route a little bit too. Do you feel like the NFL just makes stuff up as it goes with discipline? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is part of the new CBA, right? So when the 2020 CBA was ratified – the NFL and the NFLPA agreed to have this independent arbiter recommend a suspension. So if I'm not sure when people will be listening to this podcast as we're sitting here now, Jim, the NFL is still deciding whether or not to appeal because if you take the NFL at their word, right, they, they wanted Deshaun Watson indefinitely suspended at least this season, you know, right. make an example out of him because obviously they want women to watch the product. That's I hate to be cynical, but do they really care about women? I don't know. But do they want them to watch the product? Yes. So all right, if you're the NFL and you appeal, 
it stays in the news throughout the season. You're undermining the agreement that you reached with the union, right? Like that was the whole yeah. thing that the NFL shouldn't just have the power to just suspend people, as you said, as they go and, and make the rules go. up as they go. And obviously we're comparing this to Calvin Ridley, to Zeke Elliott, to yeah, don't even get me. Years. Don't get De- me going on deflated the footballs. I, you know what? We should get Richie Incognito. I'd love to get him on the podcast, right? He'd be good. You know, what, what, what's worse, what Deshaun Watson did or what Richie Incognito did? I, we, we could play that game all day, but if they were to appeal, you're undermining this agreement. You're letting it stay in the news. You could make the argument that, hey, you know what? That should just be considered shrapnel, collateral damage. You owe it to women to right. make make this suspension steeper. I, I get that for sure. I don't know what they're going to do. And I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. All I know is six games does not seem like enough. Her, you know, even obviously she, in, in this uh, report, I mean, she lays it out that what he did was, was wrong. Yeah. And he did not show remorse. And you read it and it's like, okay, then why are you only recommending six games? Right. Why is it only six? And why does it stop at he should only get massages from Cleveland Browns employees? Why not take it to the next level? It should be this dude needs therapy. This dude needs sexual therapy. Like this is mental. This is psychotic. Like he needs, this yeah. is a pattern of behavior that needs help. It, it should have taken at least that step and there was no extra monetary fines, right? So it, it, it was light. It was light. They haven't held him accountable. He's not being held accountable. No, that's it. Which is just, I just don't, I mean, to do what they did to Ridley, God wasn't even playing that week. Nonviolent like, sexual assault. Was that the, the term terminology? Nonviolent sexual assault. What the hell is that, Jim? And, and and how does that how is that okay? It's not. I mean, it's power. It's beyond the physical exertion of force. It's it's mental. It's he had the, he had this power over these victims, over these accusers, and he preyed on that power. I don't know. It's a terrible look for the league. It's Roger Goodell has to know like whatever his next move is, his legacy's on the line yet again. And, you know, he's kind of getting toward the end of his tenure. You know, he's got a pretty big ego. I'm sure he's thinking about that stuff. And you said something earlier as we're talking about this, because I, and I'm going to say this as we're talking about it. I don't even know what the right answer is. Like, I don't know what he should do. Yeah, I don't either. I, I don't, I hate to do that. Cause that's like the guy says bench that guy. What's the, but what's the answer? But this, there has to be more to this. I mean, he's got to be held more accountable than six games. That's, that's the only way I yeah. can. <coughs> that's why, yeah, if I were to, you know, make it this, you know, say that he should do something here, it's, it's that you have to appeal, you have to push for more, you have to take on all of the collateral damage that comes with it staying in the news because six isn't enough. And the way right. they structured his contract and the way they did his contract, he's not losing out. He's Deshaun Watson is not skipping a beat. Like there's a guy waving behind you. Um, but anyway, they're not skipping a beat. Right. Like he's, he's fine. Money, six games, big deal. Totally. I don't know. It just doesn't feel, it doesn't, I'm a big believer in things feeling right. You know, you know, it's funny. Our last pod, we talked about, I remember we were talking about the Kyle Murray contract. And I remember I was like, I, this just seems ridiculous. If they really wrote in four to like, why four to five hours, like for him to study film, why did they come up with that amount of time? Like that just seemed made up. And it was, it sounds like it, it, whatever they took it out. This seems made up. Like, there's no, I just, I just don't, I don't know. It's tough. It just doesn't feel right. It, it leaves you with a extremely icky feeling. And especially him. To the shield. He, he takes zero. He is not, he hasn't come, he hasn't been heartfelt, embarrassed. Just, just be some type of human and show that. Yeah. Show, show us something. I mean, we still haven't really gotten a clear answer as to why did you reach out to 
whatever it was, 30, 40, 50, who knows what the number is? Nobody knows what the number is. Why, why reach out to that many people for I massage? And you didn't care if they had professional experience. You're soliciting sex, sexual favors. And that's that telling the team that, all right, only your, only your massage therapist gave this up. That's not enough. Like, no. to the to the extreme, you know, this is quite a leap to make. I get it. It's a it's a huge leap to make, but Darren Sharper, I mean, you want to talk about somebody who used their power to their advantage? I've talked to teammates of his with the Green Bay Packers, and uh, thinking back, Leroy Butler, Antonio Freeman, Tyrone Williams, these guys were like, dude, Darren Sharper, when he went into a club, he girls just fawned over him. He could get any girl he wanted, good-looking dude, NFL star, future Hall of Famer, and yet he needed to – have this feeling of power, power, control, and obviously, as we all know now, was drugging and raping these women city to city. There, there, there's a some type of imbalance in your damn brain if if you feel the need to just have that kind of dominion. Tyler, you brought up the Packers players that Sharper played with, but remember, I was with Sharper in New Orleans, and and we had Roman Harper who played started next to him. And right. Roman did our show, and nobody, nobody saw it. Yeah, when you talk to uh, players, what was their reaction to? Just shocked. Shocked. He really did this deceitfully on his own. You almost think he almost has to, because that's like a, it's such a, I hate, it's such a creepy level that you don't want people to know what you're like he wouldn't want anybody to know like even his close like his teammate he wouldn't want anybody to know how creepy he really was and that's Absolutely. how i feel about yeah yeah right right like I mean, Watts, like he doesn't come out and just i don't know i mean that's the narcissism of it is you don't think you're going to get caught right you're dming all of these women on instagram and setting up these massages and acting rogue and doing all this behind closed doors. And you just think I can get away with it. Cause he did get away with it and gets called out. And is, is, is six games enough? Does that suffice? Is that no, no. sounds terrible. Is he going to stop? Is he really going to stop? We don't know. Nobody knows. But you're uh, right. Hey. There's a lot of power, like the Goodell power, the Sean Watson power, the Browns power. Like, there's a lot of power going on in all this. I would love to get Kevin Stefanski in an honest moment, Andrew Barry in an honest moment, the people who run the Cleveland Browns. I would love to know: Did you really want Sean Watson? Really? You, you know, you've got wives, you've got daughters, you've got sisters. This just reeks of Jimmy Haslam. Oh, it really? reeks of it. You're well, talking about one of the more incompetent owners in professional sports. No doubt. Trying to win at all costs. It's the only thing we know for sure that the owners were on board with this. That's the only thing we know for sure. Oh, but don't worry, Jim. They put out in a statement that if you were triggered, quote unquote, by this, they, they apologize. So it's amazing. It's tone deaf it, as it, it gets. It couldn't have been handled much worse. Like You know what, Jim? It, I was uh, at Colts practice today. I had to think for a second. Where the hell was I today? That happens when training. you start bouncing around, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was talking about this with uh, Pete Prisco. CBS Sports does a fantastic yeah. job. Hilarious on, on the Bird app and even better in real life. But we got serious. We're talking about this all. And hopefully I'm not, you know, preemptively uh, publicizing one of his takes. But he... He doesn't really think Deshaun Watson's like that great of a quarterback and said he wouldn't be surprised if like Davis Mills has a better season in Houston than Deshaun Watson has in Cleveland. To your point, he hasn't played in forever. Um, I have to think all of this baggage, drama, any road game is going to weigh heavily. At least I should. And Mills, you know, if, if Davis Mills stayed in school for another year, he's probably the first quarterback taken. In the 2022 he, draft. This is what was fun about evaluating these quarterbacks over the last couple of years, like I did. Now, Deshaun scored well, but he is more 
he still to me is a little more playmaker than he is like consistent down in down out quarterback. I mean, he really, I mean, he does, he he's, he's a playmaker. And I don't, I'm not disagreeing with what Pete's saying. I mean, they, he has to prove, he hasn't really done it. I mean, he was unbelievable he, on the field the last time he we is, saw him. I'm not a, a shitty a highlight, Texas team. He's that a Texas highlight team machine. Bad. He's tough. He makes plays, like no doubt. It's still hard for me to talk about the football side of this gym. It is. It doesn't. It, I know. I know. It's, That's why I started that way to say we don't even talk about the fact that we're just assuming he's going to win every game he plays. Like, there's no way it's that easy. Especially in this AFC where no. it's loaded. Loaded. You got elite quarterbacks everywhere you look. It's like it's just stacked, 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 stacked. I don't think the Steelers are going to be that scared to face Deshaun Watson, the player, either. They do a good job against Lamar Jackson. Yeah. And, you know, standing there at their training camp practice the other day, Jim, it's, you know, at first you watch a Steelers practice and it's like, man, this is difficult to watch. Like the longest pass completion, I think, was like 11 yards. Maybe it was like a catch and run kind of play. I, that, like there's tip, oh, there's tip balls. They're they're running a lot, but that's what they want. It was. I was laughing with Cam Hayward. Like he said, "Hey, yeah, all these fans are here. This may not be what all these fans want to see, but this is how we win. Like we're gonna win 13 to 10." And you know, T.J. Watt is the best edge rusher. Cam Hayward, next to Aaron Donald, is. Probably the best interior player. Minka Fitzpatrick may be the best safety. Miles Jack, I totally forgot how they added Miles Jack. Boy, his collisions with Derek Watt in practice is were about the best collisions you're going to see in a modern NFL practice. Yeah, that's and who's right in the middle of that drill? Backs on uh, linebackers, but Mike Tomlin screaming, yelling, swearing, getting into it. You know they're going to try to win that kind of way. I don't, I don't see Deshaun Watson having success against Pittsburgh. You know, I. I see Joe Burrow taking down Deshaun Watson if it becomes a shootout. I see that the Ravens have a better roster than the Browns and an MVP quarterback return from injury. I think this is the last team in the division. So I, I hope you're happy, Jimmy Haslam. I hope it was worth it, right? I'm with you. I think Baltimore wins that division. Um, yeah, where do you – I mean, how do you stack up that AFC North then? Like, how, how no, would you – I like what right you now? just said. I, I – this, I got to see the, I would pick the Pittsburgh over Cleveland based on what you said, like how you said that is it's they're too, they're too well coached. They know how to win with how they play where Cleveland doesn't have that identity, you know, with Deshaun and who, who they don't have an identity. So I I'm with you on that. I, I think, I think Cleveland's the worst team in that division. It's all in the eye of the beholder. And thank you, sir, for the beer. We're getting great service over here. Just refilled. Um, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Of the beer holder, if you will. Um, <laughs> Look at that, that timing. Good. With that, reference. that was good. That was good, though. Wait, but did I, you get the same? Did you get the same beer? Yes, it's a, a cream ale, which, you know, you hear cream ale and you kind of cringe and you kind of worry and you kind of wonder if it's 1972. And then you taste it. And it's damn good. It goes down smooth. But at first, I'm watching the Steelers practice, and I mean, Kenny Pickett looks scared and hesitant and terrified to throw the ball downfield yeah, at all. I mean, I'm not saying he's a bust by any He's a rookie no, who's Tyler, got this defense in his face. But I, I, that, I, I think the Steelers can win that way. No, I felt like I used that word for the rookies last year, Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence. I, I felt like I used too fast, scared, hurried, didn't see things. So you're – to your point, it's it kind of jumps out. It, it's the game is fast, like for these rookies. It really is, and we don't talk about that enough, right? Like, I mean, Zach Wilson at BYU is Mahomesing his he way didn't. around the field. Same with, doing with Trevor he Lawrence. Wants. They, they never, they've never seen anything like what they saw. It's which quarterbacks? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence too. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're talking about a Heisman winner, national best player in college football. And I get it, Urban Meyer is a disease and awful, but like the game is just fast. It's just fast. So fast. And you've got to be able to slow it down. It's so fast. That's why Joe Burrow, like you just knew he was going to be a stud because it wasn't too fast for him. 
right? He's he's going through his reads and he's not shimmying around that pocket. To- not to bring up your favorite player, but I've always said about Aaron Rodgers that I've never seen a guy play that position that is the most chaotic position in sports, playing quarterback. But he always looks calm on their like. I, I just don't know how he does it. But that's because the game has slowed down. For him. Burrow, that's a great. I don't like how you brought up Burrow. He he plays that way too. It doesn't seem too fast. For him. That's why we're not going to see Kenny Pickett anytime soon. None no, of they should, let, they should let Trubisky. Trubisky, over. he'll battle. He'll battle. I mean, it can't. I mean, it was bad with Ben Roethlisberger toward the end last season. He couldn't. He was done. He was done. He was done. So I, unless you really think the defense is going to regress, they're all they'll always be around 500. And if you get a little bit more of that offense, and then I would think Pittsburgh can at least push for the playoffs again. Do we want to talk about Stephen Ross? You know, the NFL really wants us to today, Jim. It's, yeah. Uh, what do you? Th- yeah. Go ahead. You can kind of. You know, I mean, the, the whole uh, tanking thing was kind of brushed aside as a joke. I don't know where to believe and buy that. But the tampering, I honestly reading it, the tampering and then pursuing Sean Payton and Tom Brady and, you know, working behind the scenes. It's, and they were docked, what, a first round pick and a third round pick. You know what? My takeaway at first is what? Do a tongue of Viola. Like, if he didn't have pressure on him before, he's going to have a lot of pressure on him now because they're not going to have the ammo to do much in the draft next year. You know, it's going to be a veteran. It's going to be a trade. If they're ready to move on, they, they, it, they can't do it via the draft. They went out and got, you know, as soon as you go out and get a receiver like Tyree Kill, just like when the Bills went and got digs, it was, you know, right away, no more excuses for the quarterback. And, and it, it paid off. I mean, both went where it worked. To it, they have no excuses right now. Like that offense is that offense is pretty built up. I like it. It seems like he's having a good camp. I still I, I gotta like see the O line. Card. I gotta see if they, you know, huge questions up front. there. I mean, and remember, Tua's uh, blind side is the right yeah. side, and Austin Jackson is it is not good. He was good. basically a turnstile last season. So yeah, there's still questions there. Like I, it, it's, I keep saying it again. It's just not that easy. Like it's training camp highlights of a, a deep pass does nothing, means nothing, does nothing. Agreed. You could see how well he started. Like I talked about him all the time as far as the way he started games last year, he was incredible. I'm talking long drives, precision, continuing drives, third downs, money, accurate, tough. And then all of a sudden, second half would come, crunch time. Horrible decisions, hard, like game costing decisions, fourth throws, turnovers, accuracy, made no sense. He's got to get, he's got to get over that home. Like I've seen the good. There is good there. We talked about this. I didn't want to write him off. He was coming off an injury. So there is good there, but he does have to clean up some things. So it's not, he's not, I mean, he does have some issues. He's accurate. Yeah. Um, and if he's got talent around him, he'll do something with it. I mean, we saw that in college. But can he be that dude in the huddle, right? Like, I don't know much about his personality. I'd love to learn it just, from afar. Is he that guy that's just going to take charge and rally? And be like, I feel like he is. I feel like I've hear, heard pretty good things about him like that. But, yeah, I, you're right, though. I mean, that's the – I feel like Tyree Kill, they're going to want to see that, like – I mean, that's kind of why they're just like injecting all this confidence into him. Like Ooh, they're really trying to get his confidence it's back. It's I think it was bit. shot with Brian Flores. I think Brian Flores kind of, you know, that relationship was terrible. Terrible. And I think behind the scenes, he did nothing to help to his confidence with, with teammates. And you saw what Chase Edmonds said in, in part three of our, our story, Jim. I mean, he's, he said, you know, from what he heard from players, like the system was set up to fail him. I'm not making excuses, but, you know, it was a bad situation. And now it's a really good situation. So it's on him to deliver. In the a lot of positive. Him. Definitely a lot of positive. Um, they've done a nice job kind of flipping the script on the head. It ended so ugly with Flores. You know, they come around, they get 
Tyree Kill. You know, they, they get a new coach who's creative on offense and, and is backing the quarterback. So that they've done a nice job of, you know, getting things positive. Um, ever run across Mike McDaniel? No. Did you guys ever cross paths? No. I love his interviews. Yeah. Seems like an actual human being, right? I mean, how really rare. Does. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, that's a team that I certainly can't wait to pay attention to this year. But as I'm like reading the report on the tampering, Jim, I'm, maybe I'm just a little too cynical when it comes to the NFL, but I'm like, this stuff probably happens all the time, right? Like all that. I just assume that owners and quarterbacks and coaches were constantly working these these backdoor deals. I mean, that's what the NBA is. Without me saying too much, yes. Jim, you can say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Whatever. You know, I usually do. I usually do. If it, if I'm the only one, like I don't mind if it hurts me. Like if it's something that, but this story, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put out there, but. It, trust me, it happens. There is a story to be told, though, as we are telling us. Oh, I'm just saying tampering happens. I'm, it, it happens. I mean, look, the biggest joke in the world we know is free agency, right? That that tampering is. Well, I think what we have to do is when you don't have Walter, you know, make sure you get a few drinks in you before we hit record. I just want to okay, be, yeah. I don't know if I want to give we're gonna get We're going to get you get you all sauced up, Jim, and then I'm going to get that story out of you. I mean, that's, can you do, that's can our you, only option here. You know when they interview people that don't want to be seen and they, they distort the voice? And <laughs> we can do that. I'll just say that we've got a, a new guest co-host for that particular episode. We've had enough recurring guests. You know, maybe it's Doug, maybe it's Jim, maybe it's Roman Harper, maybe it's Eric Moulds. We don't know. It could be anybody, right? Oh, it's it was. It opened my eyes to like <clears throat> this stuff happens. So yeah. Can you just give us a little chum in the water? Can you just throw a little teaser out there? No. No. Oh, because I don't know if I could do it without without it just going the way you know. I know where it could go. It's, you know, it's really, I don't know. It's really not a big, it's probably not a big deal, but I'd rather not. That's fine. That's fine. I'll stop pressing. So no, I want pressing. you, I want to talk and trust me, you know, I, I'm open book. You know, like I said, if it's just me, but yeah. this one, I don't want it to come back on anybody. But I assume it happens. I think we all kind of do. Uh, you can stop assuming it, it's, it happens. It does. Even the tanking. You know, I. This is where I. Well, might we, well, we did a whole podcast on like the art of tanking, I guess. But that, and I don't think it happens. Those conversations I, are had. I, I I don't think tanking happens. But. I'm sorry, like, tanking gracefully happens. Yeah, where you like you have a plan. Because right. we talked about how, you know, yeah, we were in a situation where we could have tried out like like you said, hey, let's get a look at some of these young players. Let's yeah. move on from the vets. Let's see what we got and then revamp. That would be what you're describing. I don't think guys go out and say, I'm going to play terrible to lose today. I don't think that happens. I don't. I don't think guys would try to lose. Players. I don't think players would ever do it. No, each game is too important. Too important, too hard to, to throw live to, 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 to too many livelihoods, right? Yeah. There's a lot of livelihoods. Only a quarterback. I think only a quarterback can really throw a game. I'm just glad Calvin Ridley was suspended the whole year. You know, you gotta you gotta get that Man. nonsense out of the game. How dare a player? Play, he wasn't even playing that week, and he puts in a stupid. Who cares? Who gives a? You know what? I can't even believe it. Like, it's so yeah, – it's, it's insane. And as much as the NFL wants to sit there and embrace gambling like they do, that's wrong. It's hypocritical. I mean, to just kind of wrap your arms around gambling and DraftKings and FanDuel and – Oh, but, you know, be responsible. Be responsible. He wasn't playing. And he wasn't even playing. That's what kills me. Like, I just don't – that to me is – it's like – it's gambling's. I get it. I get it. If you're playing, like, 
that's that would be a bad look i guess it kind of speaks to how i view crime in general and just wrongdoings in general like if you're not harming other people i don't give a shit what you do if you're in your own bedroom drinking whatever taking whatever drug what like doing whatever you want to yourself like be my guest see but if you're like then you know getting in the car and driving or hurting other people yeah right hurting other people bringing harm to others intimidating others it, using your power and influence over others as deshaun watson did i have a problem with that i mean what harm did calvin ridley really do nothing <laughs> he tapped his phone a few times it's i feel like that's a good just code for everybody to follow in life like you know what's weird is even like the whole um got becky from full house what's her what's her name the actress remember she got in all uh, that trouble the white collar crime like trying to get uh, her kid I know into school. yes 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 yeah so all right it's gonna drive me nuts we're gonna get it was called the, out the, the woman laura law um laura yeah that's right that's right laura, yeah so Lori laughlin laura you know she, she's trying to get her kid into college and does, like, obviously it's a crime it's not good. You should be punished. But didn't the like the FBI show up or something? It was treated like she was this drug kingpin and was met with the backlash of so terrorism. Insane. It was okay. insanity. Like what harm? Maybe all right, maybe she took the spot from one kid in the college for her daughter. Okay. You know, I don't think it should be treated on par with the fervor of the treatment. Like kind of got off the rails there, Jim. But it's just it's it's a big problem I have with, you know. Our country at large and it's just how we view people who do bad things no it's true i mean it's yeah we went off this because it went to ridley and stephen ross is how we started this whole thing the tampering but at the end of the day i don't really tampering really doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me either i mean I, to me if you're trying if the goal is to make your franchise you're the owner and you want to hire the best coach and get the best quarterback you can. I don't know. <laughs> now the, 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 the pain a coach to lose games, if that was the case that, anywhere, that, I do have a problem with that. If that I do. Happened, I agree. Ever that. Happened. I don't like that. I don't like that. And you're talking about you know, real integrity here. And that is affecting others, people's livelihoods. So. Yeah. I don't like that. All right. Let's talk about some actual football a little bit. Um, is there football though? You know, hey, you we'll take what we can get. It's, it's going I'm getting to that training itch, camp, man. Getting, I'm getting that, oh, I'm getting that training camp. I do camp miss itch. that. I do miss that. Like, it does get you in the mood. Those first, like, you're at the, you're at the best part of it. You know, those first initial days, because the dog days, you know, when they come about day seven, eight, it turns into, like, you're in survival mode. Everybody, like, let's just get through this. It's it's corny, but when the pads come on and you can actually no, hit somebody, it's good. Yeah. But the teams that hit, right? Like if you're gonna hit, then you enjoy it. You and McDermott can't sleep at night. <laughs> That's what you said, right? You couldn't sleep at night. But to your point, it is true. Like it is fun to get. Yeah. Did you see the clip of? Uh, you know, why not call a little quarterback draw when the pads are on as the Bills did? I did, I did. Did you see that? What was your take on that? I have a take, but I want to hear yours. It, I'm shocked that it, it blew up like it did at all. I don't I don't know. I just, I, I guess we weren't there to really know, but I can't, it didn't seem, I just can't imagine that guy, Jordan Phillips was, that guy loves, like he came back to Buffalo, like, he loves, he wants to be a part of this. Yeah. I, I, well, first you of all, why, like why are you, you calling that play if you don't want the quarterback to get hit? Well, you're, you're calling it, you're calling it knowing that they will lay up, they won't hit. Why, that doesn't simulate anything. Like, what does that accomplish if you're calling a play for the quarterback to run up the middle? True. And, but it didn't, Jordan Phillips barely even shrugged. <laughs> like it was it nothing. It and and Josh Allen got very, very upset about it. I tell you, I probably told this story on here before. Um, 
Junior Gallette, the defensive end. Um, oh, yeah, I, I love this. I'd sign, from New Orleans, I'd sign him. And he had almost um, blew out Chase Daniels, our backup quarterback. And it was in the offseason, you know, but he almost, he cheap shot, you know, he, he, he hit Chase Daniels. And Greg Williams in the defensive staff room was like, he made Gallette stand up. I was like, hey, you're lucky that was Chase Daniel, basically. Like, you're lucky that was the backup because if it was Breeze, he's like, I'd have an apple and a roadmap for you. An apple so you could have something to eat and a roadmap, find your way home. Like, because you don't touch, you don't touch the quarterback. You just don't do it. You don't. But I didn't think, to, the, to your point, that didn't look like what, he wasn't coming off the edge and like blindsiding him or falling into his knee. Or, uh. Yeah. No, and we're about as pro Josh Allen as you can get to, but Hey, I guess teach their own. He was upset about it. So that was the bills. Hey, Isaiah McKenzie. He's getting a lot Looks of love. Like he could be the slot man. A lot he's of love. been uh, making a lot of plays. I know it's training camp, but I feel like the plays he's making is what we saw in New England, the one opportunity he got after he was benched and made to be the scapegoat in that Colts game. He, Jameson Crowder's got the production. I get it. He's done it. But, I mean, McKenzie's got the rapport and the relationship with Josh Allen. They've been together longer than anybody on the roster. They're different. I agree. They'll find a way to get them. They'll use them to their strengths. Like, you can't – McKenzie's a nightmare. Like, if he's on the field – he is – it's an alert to the whole defensive staff. Yeah. It is. And he's most – you know, you bring in Cole Beasley, John Brown, then Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Gabe Davis, and had all these other guys. And, and he's just kind of been this jet-sweeping decoy who's I just love running him. around. And, and not, he, has, he is willing himself into the game plan, forcing them to, to use him. I don't know how, how you don't use this guy when you see what we see at practice. So I'm not going to poo-poo training camp. is nothing when, I mean, you no, see it. If no, he's no. making real plays down the yes. field with Allen looking to him, that would be my one takeaway from Bill's camp, really. That's it. Get no, him the ball. I, think it's, that rece- I love how they put together that receiving core, like the blend of their skill sets. Like McKenzie, Crowd, they're, they're all different. And they're all, they all fit the puzzle. Uh, it's a, cause you know, Davis is your size, just, you know, just strong, everything, you know, digs, obviously the one, then you got Crowder, route runner, slot, reliable, McKenzie, game changer, you know, can do it all. You know, if the ball's in his hands, could be six. Tight end, talented. Multiple backs that they throw to. Like, the, the offense is constructed. And we know that Brandon Bean wanted to find a receiving back. Chase Edmonds was ready to sign with the Buffalo Bills, looked at the numbers, said, oh, New York State taxes? No thanks. <laughs> James Cook's a second-round pick. I mean, they want to use a back as a yeah, that's receiver. Yeah, that's a good point. So that that's another – facet to this offense and maybe they really haven't had before yeah because cook is a guy that can i mean he could take i mean he could catch it and t- score any concerns over a low wonder lick his wonder lick was alarmingly low does that concern you in an offense that, like this they would have done their work that yes i would say it's an once again we always use the term alert you know like at that position you don't that's always a position that is – see, the Wonder Lick doesn't test football intelligence. That's what you have to remember. The Wonder Lick is a test – it's just a time test that if you're not a good test taker, you're not going to score well. But it's not a football thing. So what you do with a guy, if he has a low test score, they did their work. I'm sure they spent a ton of time X and O with him. I'm sure he was fine. So – yeah, you know, I just remember being a kid, and uh, I think the Bills had a draft party a long time ago. My dad was a season ticket holder, and I went with him once. I was maybe, I don't know, 9, 10 years old. And maybe when Travis Henry was a running back, you know, hell of a running back. I mean, oh, yeah. 
I think Zach Thomas referred to him as like a porcupine or a, a bowling ball with quills. I mean, he was really good there for a few years. He was. But my dad said that he ran into uh, yeah, that's right, I wasn't even with him. He ran with he ran into Steve Fairchild, the running backs coach at the time. Mm-hmm. And my dad asked him like about his intelligence because I think I think Henry had a low wonder like at the time. There was some concern and Fairchild, I'm paraphrasing, said to my dad. You tell them to run to the left, move the pile, run to the right, move the pile. It's, Maybe it's not as complicated as we think. I'm not. The history of that is always, I don't know. I can tell you but that it's it used, wasn't. Scouts use it, though. Teams use it. There's a reason no, they no, take the no. test. It's, it's, certainly, it's certainly used. I, I was never a fan of it. Oh, but I, what I was going to say is now that I can kind of compare just training camps – Oh, yeah. The Bills offense, the Bills weapons, and just the ball getting moved just, like yeah. 10, 20, 30 yards down the field in general versus Pittsburgh versus even Indianapolis. You know, they're a team that wants to run the ball and win with defense too. Matt Ryan's 37. When I hear, real quick though, to your what you're saying right now is making me laugh. We're sitting here talking about the Steelers with Trubisky and they don't throw the ball down the field and the Colts have switched quarterbacks every year. Rivers to Wentz to Matt Ryan run the ball. Like what, how's that going to work in the AFC? (laughs) Like what I'm hearing from you, I don't feel like the Colts and Steelers are going to be in the mix, like to contend for the, to contend for like a championship. Disagree though, because look, I mean, Pittsburgh, they hit Buffalo in the mouth in week one. They won in yeah. Buffalo. I'm not Orchard saying you Park. can't. I'm not saying you Indian, can't Indianapolis, win an 41-15. Oh, you're right. Okay, you're saying go the distance with that stuff. I'm saying the whole thing. It just seems like a strange way to build your team in today's football. It's a needle to thread, but here's what I'd to defend Indianapolis and Pittsburgh. I mean, they'd love to have a Josh Allen, a Joe Burrow, a Lamar right, Jackson. Right. To, and Pittsburgh probably hung on to Ben Roethlisberger one or two seasons too long, and, and Indianapolis is just like recycling and doing their best and trying to find somebody. I, I give them credit; they didn't sell their souls for a quarterback, no, right? They Matt didn't make Ryan, a play for Deshaun Watson. Matt Ryan will get you as long as he doesn't have to do too much. He's he's good. He's okay. Like he's still he functional. One second, Jim. I gotta get. I gotta try a different beer here. Do you have any uh, IPAs? I do. Beautiful. Thank you. Right, we're moving from the cream house to the IPAs. Yeah, here. that's a good switch, I think. For you. Um, it's a good no, switch, that is. I like that switch. I just... You know, Matt Ryan was struggling today with um, fade routes. So yeah, they, they, I could see he, that. He, couldn't, he was, you know, back when... Even when he had Julio Jones, you didn't really see him throw a lot of fade routes. Remember, Julio Jones' touchdown counts were kind of low some of those years. But... Oh, thanks a lot, man. Sure. But what was the throw with Philip Rivers against Buffalo in the wild card 2020 that couldn't make it? Probably compelled in, 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 whether he was going to retire or not. I think they would have moved on from Philip Rivers. Great. Fourth down, Michael Great. Pittman open in the end zone. No, it wasn't no. a fade, but it was similar ish. Terrible throw. throw. I couldn't yeah. make it. Couldn't make it. Matt Ryan couldn't make it today. It's training camp, one practice, I know. I'm parachuting in. But does he make that big throw in that big game that you need at 37? I don't know. I love Jonathan Taylor. I love the studs on that defense. I mean, you've got Stephon Gilmore, Shaquille Leonard, no longer Darius Leonard, Kenny Moore, DeForest Buckner. If Yannick they're that Gagwe. good, it is true. If they're that good on defense, I mean – that's the, you know, it's always been good to me. It's quarterback defense. That's it. That's all you need. I just don't know. AFC, Matt Ryan, tough. It always comes back to the QB in the, the AFC, AFC, especially. Well, I'm going to be in Cincinnati uh, on Thursday. So we'll get a look at. Joe Burrow, I mean, that's an interesting team where you've got weapons all over. The way they built the team is like what you mentioned earlier. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. 
Um, they, said, oh, they, they, they could have drafted the lineman, and they didn't. No. They were mocked for it. They were made fun of, and that decision got them to the Super Bowl. I am interested to see how they respond this year to the success because it's not easy. Like, they did it. I mean, I think Burrow will. I'm not worried about him, but as a team, can they, you know, to replicate that is tough. You know what interests me is what happens with Joe Burrow's contract? Because when you know you have the guy and you drafted that guy, every team pays him, every team. And he was a slam dunk from day one. Mike Brown doesn't like to spend money, <laughs> to put it nicely. He does not like to spend. Is he going to just break the bank? I mean, Joe Burrow's contract is going to be historic. Is he going to be willing to bite that bullet? I would. I, I sure so. would hope so. I hope so. I think. I think. And you're going to have Jamar Chase down the pipe. Their window, I mean, it's crazy to think, but they've. No, it's true. They've, they've got a window. That's why I want to see how. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's not easy. Any uh, XFL fun that you can, you know, fill us in no. on before we sign no, off? No, we're, it's, we're in a little, you know, we're getting ready to, it's a constant, it's a constant, just a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that has to get done to get this thing off the ground. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm talking about for training camp. It's a lot, but no, it's, it's happening though. But, you know, they've done a great job of kind of identifying stages as we go and what needs to get done, accomplished. And we're on schedule. Beautiful. Beautiful. I can't wait. I want yeah, to get some guys on here. Some, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, I'm going to, I need to talk to uh, some people, see who we can get for guests. I'd no, love to Kevin get, Anderson you know, wants to come get, on. I know he's not a head coach. I'd love to get Greg Williams. Hey, you and me both, we were texting about it uh, a few months ago, you, and he I was in. Oh, I would love it. That was, I mean, there were a lot of fun interviews for uh, Blood and Guts, the, the tight end book I was working on, and that, that one's right up there. Just hearing his voice, hearing him be everything you could possibly expect. I mean, Greg Williams is everything. What you think Greg Williams is, right? Like, it's... I'm saying I, I probably mentioned this on here already, but like him talking about the nickel corners that you need in today's NFL, like with these tight ends. He said, uh, "You need a quarter, a cornerback with balls." And then he <laughs> paused, and he goes, "Well," and he goes, "Nuts!" Like <laughs> to play that spot. So it wasn't enough to just say balls. He paused and said, "Nuts." You, you did it. Perfect. Not just any, just not any set of balls. You need. Nuts. No, you seriously are. You, it's taking me back to like I'm sitting in his meetings. <laughs> I've totally forgot until I didn't forget. We solicited outlandish, ridiculous questions from readers on Twitter. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. We want all of your zaniness. We forgot the last handful of pods. We didn't forget this Tuesday night. And I'm just looking at him for the first time now. There are some buttes in here, Jim. So let's get to them. Right out of the chute, my friend Aaron, big Green Bay Packers fan. I've blown her off several times. She's asked me to come on her podcast. Things have come up. Family, work, life, Aaron, life, I apologize, life. life. But here we go. She asks, would you rather have hair for teeth or toenails for eyelashes. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a great question. That's a great question. Hair for teeth. Toenails for eyelashes. I don't, like, how long is the hair on your teeth? Like, does it grow like, you know what I'm saying? Or is it just kind of... I don't think I want toenails on as an eyelash. I think I'm going hair with teeth. Hair for teeth? Yeah. How do you, so you just probably a lot of milkshakes, right? That's what, or I don't, I'm just, I'm saying how, 
how much hair is like is it good meal in and pill form? Or? Yeah. The toenails for the eyelashes. Um, I don't know, man. It just seems like a lot of bad things could go. I don't know. It's more visible to the world, right? You're you're less attractive to general society. You're a little grosser if people are looking at toenails for out. I mean that the hair for the teeth you can kind of hide. Like if people don't like their teeth when they take pictures and they kind of, you know, give the toothless smile. Yeah. You, you can it's... get by in life with your dignity intact, I think, with the hair for the teeth. I hear you. You know, I was going to go toenails, but I think I'm going hair for teeth. I think I'm going hair. That's a crazy question. Oh, Hooligan Brewing Company. I love this question. Ask, if Go Long was a beer, what would it be? Oh, man. Well, Hooligan's I think I have to go a, ooh. Oh, so this is hard for me. getting twisted in the knots right now. I th- I'm still on that IPA kick, but what kind of IPA are we talking? Like bitter West Coast? Are we talking smooth, hazy, hazy. New England style? I like hazy. I think we're talking hazy IPA. Yeah. But a distinctive bite, Jim. Like 8.0. Yeah. That, that seems to be our, kind of our what we gravitate to at Hamburg. I hesitate, though, because it's the summer and very, very sneaky at Hamburg has been You know beautiful. how I feel about that. That's been, that's been the go-to for me. Sour, you know? I know. It's, which it's I sour. never... And then, of course, you know, we are the champagne of podcasts, which is Miller High Life, which is my all-time favorite go-to, which I know drives you crazy. But Hey, I, I don't discriminate. I mean, Andy Janovich, fullback, he got me onto Bush Lights, and I used to make fun of Bush Light. You know, it's, you get 30 of them for a buck. I get it. I get it. It's smooth. It's crushable. So are we in the summer and the winter? So we're a hazy IPA 8.0. Yeah, because I think like we can't go the bush route because it's it's cheap, right? That'd be like if Go Long was, you know, if we're just firing out memes and gifs and bullshit. Like, yeah, then we're bush. Then we're, you know, Keystone, you know, the college beer. But no, we we want to be a premium beer. We want to be tasty filling less filling i should say yet with a little bite i like it all right let's get to another question here these are good there's a lot of there's some football questions on here but i i I love the non-football questions yeah yeah let's do a little non unless you see one but oh oh my god mark david of course mark would be bringing it He's a loyal listener, a loyal reader. He's been there from the start. At F Reich Comeback. Mark David, thank you so much for your patronage. You, you haven't seen this question, Jim? I was looking at some, but I haven't seen this one. Okay. If Monus was going to start a bar fight in downtown Buffalo, which one of his former players would he choose as his backup? See, you you think you're going in to fight? one of your players but no it's your backup who do i have who has your back? backup that's a great great question that's a great question I i'm love trying that. to think i thought it was a no-brainer but you're thinking does it have to be a buffalo bill you know what we'll let you pick an eagle a saint and a bill if you want so All here we three go stops here we go Eagles, Jeremiah Trotter. Okay. I'm walking in. He'll be on my, uh, he'll be behind me. Severely Saints. underrated linebacker. Saints. This is easy for me too. Would be Jiree Evans. Glad you didn't choose Darren Sharper. I had to go just, I'm talking, these guys are the, these guys, you know, I'm walking in, you're, 
you see Jairi 6'5", 330, you know what Trotter looks like. I mean, you're not – so just off the bus, I'm looking good. jairi has got some shit to him, too. Yeah, nasty. Nasty, when he needs to be. Nicest guy off the field. Mm-hmm. Trotter, too. Nice guy. And on, on the field, it just changes. Um, okay, and then Buffalo. <laughs> oh, man. This one is crazy. I'm trying to think who I would never, ever want to mess with. I'm going to tell you who, I, who I'm going to pick. It's crazy because I think I know who you're going to pick for yourself, for Buffalo. Are you going to yeah. pick Richie? Of course. Yeah. I, th- uh, I thought Richie it was a no-brainer. Was yeah. I, you're, this is going to make surprise you a little bit because this guy, he'll never qu- – I don't know who could beat him in a fight because he'll never quit. It's Kyle Williams. Ooh. That dude. I like that choice. That dude is country tough. Louisiana. Like, yeah, so I'm going. I that's, I like my crew. Trotter, Kyle Williams, Jairi Evans. So when you step into a bar, downtown Buffalo, let's say RIP the Lodge. Me and my pal Mike Rodak might have had a few beers there back in our single days. No longer there. You walk in there on Chippewa. This somebody good. gets in, somebody gets in your face, Jim, and says, "Hey, Baldy, get over here, you son of a bitch. Why did you draft this guy? Why did you sign that guy? I want a right. piece of you." I'm pretty sure so far that this has happened. So where this is. <laughs> You're like wondering, hey, what what, what camera footage? So far, yes, yeah, this is true. Yeah, Kyle Williams is there. He steps in. He's he's at your shoulder. Now, what happens from there? Do you just tap him and say, "Take care of this"? No. Or okay. Well, I couldn't do that to him. You try. You give it your best go. <sighs> I give my best go, but but Kyle would clean it up. Yeah, I feel pretty good. And Richie, Richie was, I mean, obviously you got to think about Richie. Yeah. Uh, it's almost too easy of an answer that I'm glad that you thought outside of the box. So, all right. Our pal, Dan Murphy always comes in hot with the best questions. <laughs> he said, uh, I have gone to work at a quote unquote real job hungover on at least 16 Mondays for the past 14 years. How prevalent slash acknowledged are Monday hangovers at team facilities amongst players, coaches, and staff? Monday hangovers, believe it or not, aren't, no. Those aren't your nights. Your Sunday nights aren't your, um, Mondays are busy in the NFL for staff, for players, um, I would say the players day off on Tuesdays, those guys are, you know, that's their day. So Monday nights, like those guys are getting, if, you know, if your schedule's Sunday, but yeah, Tuesday's their day off. The other day they're hungover is Saturday mornings. They like, they like Friday nights in the NFL. Players like Friday nights, then Saturday's their hangover day, get through it. Boom, Sunday game day. It's a little Russian roulette there. I mean, you're still now, talking. Staff, now, staff, the busy days after, you know, Monday, Tuesdays are busy, and then the rest of the week we're probably, we're, we're getting through our hangovers. Then. Not to give out too much because I want people to hopefully buy the book, but I talked to a lot of these tight ends about this because I think about it, Jeremy Shockey, George Kittle, Rob Gronkowski, a lot of the best tight ends ever did a lot of drinking. And yeah. uh, I tried to figure out, like, what, what days, to your point, like, do you, would you go out? And right. you're right, Jim. Friday night was a biggie. And it, it surprised it. me because I'm thinking, oh, shit, you got a game in 48 hours. Yeah. No, good. That, that was a good night. That was their night. Thomas Greco, longtime subscriber, longtime friend. Good to see you, my man. He asks, John Madden inherited a team that made the Super Bowl and the AFL championship game the prior two years. 
then took seven more years to get back and win a Super Bowl. <laughs> so is Madden the coach overrated? Or is that sacrilegious? Ooh. Here's why I'm laughing. I didn't I didn't know that. That he inherited either. that. I'd love, right? I don't care what the answer is on this. I personally, anytime you win that many Super Bowls, I'm not gonna take anything away from it. But I love the hot take on this. That Madden, I think he should run with this take for the rest of the year and just at every party he goes to to say, I think Madden's overrated. So I'm going to probably use it too. And I don't even know if I believe it, but I might just say it to stir it up a little bit. The timing of this question is, is spot on because Super 70s Sports, a great follow on oh, a that not great, great app. Follow. Great follow. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those accounts that gives you a little faith in Twitter. Like maybe this isn't the cesspool that we think it is because it's, There's some good Twitter, it's right? funny, you know. It's not just the 70s. You get into yeah, all, all the nostalgia. But just today, they have a picture of John Madden in the rain, in the slicker, coaching, looking determined. And they tweet, highest winning percentage of any NFL head coach with at least with, with at least 100 games in the league is John F. and Madden, 759. Yeah. So he still won a lot of games, even if he wasn't winning any games. Right. The great take. I guess I, I, I guess I can't say he's overrated, but I respect the take. I do. I, I respect the take. I love the take. Because anything that cuts against what we're all trained and conditioned to believe in social media, I'm all for. I'm all for. So I respect. Uh, who gave that take again? I'm a Screcko. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make sure I give him credit if I if I use it. He would. He yeah. He's a. Uh, Reads everything, listens to everything. We cannot thank you enough, Tom. I really appreciate it. I respect that take. All right, Brian Wood, straightforward. Good question. Lake vacation or beach vacation? Like easy for me. Not even close. Beach. Going beach too. And we're not even a beach guy, but something about looking at that ocean and not knowing how far it goes, right? I'm a beach guy. It's unlimited. Man, this is a tough one. I got to think on my toes here. As to you, Alex. Alex Fabili, another loyal, loyal reader, listener. He's been to the extravaganzas. We, which we got, I know I keep teasing it. We got to set that up with Johnny Russo. We're going to make it happen. Can we please? Of, uh, the 2022 Can we season. Please? We have to. Can we, we have please? to. Yes. He asked for our worst roommate stories. I've got a few, but I don't know if I really want to talk about it. I don't know either. Podcast. I don't know either. Well, I mean, we're, we're, we do a podcast over beers. So you can only imagine in college when, when beer was involved, what happened, right? Dorm life, period. That's yeah. a scary, that's a scary situation. Dorm life is. A couple more IPAs and I'd probably be sharing a lot. But yeah, I, can't, I, don't, I, I couldn't even do it. I don't, even, I don't want to relive it. I don't want to relive and it. I do remember like freshman year. At, so freshman year I went to St. John Fisher, played football, figured out, you know, probably should give this up, transferred to Syracuse, graduated there after three years, but. I can still remember freshman year, like, you know, I didn't really drink in high school, did not drink in high school. You know, playing high school sports, I'm sure you're the same way. It's just like, just played sports. You, you're terrified yeah. to get in trouble and just didn't do anything. So the first, went to college, first time, you know, getting into a little beer here, a little liquor there, whatever. We played football in the hallway at our door, like just all out football game. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember like waking up with this huge bump on my head and not knowing yeah. how in the hell I got it. Only that we played football in the hallway. So it's kind of a lame story, but we got to give him something. All right. Let's see. Mm. I mean, there's some good questions here, but oh gosh. Oh no, Jim. We've got Mrs. Go Long chiming in here. Gina. My wife, 
I hope it's a food question. When can we get another dog? She's relentless, Jim. Oh, she's she, relentless. She does. You know what she does? She does a good job of staying on you with that. She had three ricochet questions here. I th- she asked, when can we get another dog? How many dogs is too many? And do you love me? So pretty good. Here we go. No one. <laughs> no, I should say two because we do have one dog and one dog is fine. And then, yes, Gina, I love you very much. But we're not getting another dog. Draw the line of Ed. Ed is incredible. We love Eduardo, Edmundo, COVID, COVID boy, Covey. You know, every dog has a lot of nicknames. He's, he's fantastic. But uh, we're good. We're good. You know what? You know what was the final straw for me? We went on vacation, like we talked about last week. Yeah. And the dog was at the kennel. And the kennel's great. Like, we love the kennel that we use. But you get that bill, and it's whatever it was. I don't don't remember, like 300 bucks, 400 bucks. And then you think, oh, if we had another dog, you would times that by two. No, thanks. No, we're good. We're good. I mean, that's a, I think that's a, actually a good reason. I mean, I think it's well, it's thought out. You're not just like saying no, you, you have a reason. Oh, I, I missed it. Her fourth follow up was if you do, then can we go to the SP, SPCA tomorrow? No, we can't, hon. I'm in, uh, I'm in so Indiana. <laughs> there's no fear in her game, this, this decision. She will make it work. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, Those are the best of the best. I think we're good. I can't tell you how excited, I mean, this Madden overrated thing has me really laughing. (laughs) It does. That was a good one. I've never even heard it. I didn't even think about it. I never studied it. But he did inherit a really good team. He did. That is, man. One could say it's the team that, you know, a regime in Buffalo inherited that was built meticulously by Doug Whaley and Jim Monas. We were... Just needed a quarterback. Just needed that. That's all. But everything else. The, yeah. They were a Super Bowl winning team. And would they say that right. he inherited Super Bowl champ? And I think that's what the quote was. Yeah. Inherited a Super Bowl caliber and, roster, one through And something else. Like they conference like back to back good years. This is a good take. I love it. Hey, they got open invites. You know, they can come on the pod anytime. It can be fun. That'd be Let's good. Have some fun. All right, we better uh, we better sign off, Jim. I'm with you. Have your a great trip, man. Keep scouting. Great. You're doing the scouting. Keep doing your thing. We're trying. We're trying. Gonna, you know, we. I'm, I'm gonna crank out some of these camp reports and um, you know touch on some stuff. But we've got a lot of really fun profiles, deeper dives coming at golongtd.com. So sign on up. If you don't want to subscribe uh, to become a full subscriber right away, that's fine. You can, you can become a free subscriber, get a bunch of stories, podcasts that way. And we'll be announcing like the plans for the season, September 1st. So be on alert for that. We're pretty jacked about it. I know Jim is. You can see no, this I am. right I think, now. No, I think we have some good stuff coming. Like, Especially with, I'm hoping I can bring something to the table with the XFL. So, love it. And I mentioned him earlier, but Kevin Anderson, he uh, was Chase Edmonds's quarterback at Fordham. Yeah, I remember him. We talked for that story. Uh, he he's gunned. He wants to get into the XFL. So I told him that he can come on the pod, and you know, you'll interview him for a job. I hope that was okay with you, Jim. I just, you know, I just kind of threw it out there. I don't work for the XFL. No, no, anymore. that's great. Just yeah, gonna, I remember him. Might, might as well. I do remember him. All right, let's do it. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you listening.